Hello and welcome to Byju's Exam Prep IAS. Welcome to the daily quiz discussion for the 29th of August 2022. Please note, Byju's Exam Prep IAS is now on Telegram. Join the group to not miss out on any current affairs update for the UPSC exam. Beginning with the first question of the day. It reads, which one of the following is not a joint military exercise conducted by India with the US? The four options are as follows. Option A, Vajra Prahar. Option B, Hand in Hand. Option C, Yudh Abhyas. And Option D, Cope India. What is the context? This article from the PAB takes note of the 13th edition of the India-US Joint Military Exercise, Vajra Prahar, concluding in Himachal Pradesh, Baklo. Note, Vajra Prahar is a joint exercise between the special forces of the two nations, India and the US. With this understanding, let's get back to the question. Note, Vajra Prahar, Yudh Abhyas and Cope India, all these three are joint military exercises conducted by India with the US. While hand in hand is a joint military exercise conducted by India and China. Note, this hand in hand exercise takes place between the armies of the two countries. The main aim of this hand-in-hand -hand exercise is to enhance interoperability between the two armies in the domain of counter-terrorism. So the answer is option B. We have already discussed Vajraprahar, which is a joint exercise between the special forces of India and US. Note, Yuddha Abhyas is a joint military exercise bilaterally occurring between India and US. It started in the year 2002 and is undertaken by the armies of the two countries. The main aim is to promote defense cooperation. COPE India are a series of international air force exercises conducted between the Indian Air Force and the United States Air Force. It has been conducted in Indian territories. Note, the first such exercise happened in the year 2004. This was followed by similar exercises in the year 2005, 2006 and 2009. The last COPE India exercise was conducted in the year 2018. Next, let's move on to the second question. The question reads, which of the following animals is not naturally found in the Kaziranga National Park? The four options are as follows. Option A, Western Hulok Gibbon. Option B, Indian Manjak. Option C, Golden Langur. And Option D, Lion-Tailed Macaque. What is the context? This article from today's The Hindu takes note of the Kaziranga Wildlife Rehabilitation Center completing 20 years. Note, this center for wildlife rehabilitation and conservation at Panbari is located near the Kaziranga National Park and Tiger Reserves. It provides emergency care, treatment and rehabilitation to indigenous wild animals of the area. Coming back to the question. Let us understand all these four animals before we get down to the answer. The Western Hulok Gibbon is a primate from the Gibbon family. This species is found in India, Bangladesh and Myanmar. In India, it is found in the states of Assam, Mizoram and Meghalaya. Note, this is found in the Kaziranga National Park. Next, the Indian Manjak, also called the Southern Red Manjak or Barking Deer, is a deer species native to South and Southeast Asia. Its call sounds like barking, hence the name Barking Deer. It indulges in such sounds when frightened by a predator. Next, Golden Langur, also referred to as the Geese Golden Langur, is an old world monkey found in a region of Western Assam, India, as well as in the neighboring foothills of the Black Mountains of Bhutan. Note, Golden Langur is one of the world's most endangered primates. Consider the last animal, Lion-Tailed Macaque. The Lion-Tailed Macaque, also known as the Wanderoo, is an old world monkey endemic to the Western Guards of South India. Hence, the correct answer to this question would be option D. Why? Because while the first three animals are found in the Kaziranga National Park, naturally, the Lion-Tailed Macaque is not found. Moving on to the third question. It reads, 
which of the following statements are correct with respect to functioning of the Central Bureau of Investigation? There are three question statements given here. The first one reads, State government's consent is required to extend CBI's investigation beyond union territories. The second statement reads, There are two types of consent, general consent and specific consent. Statement 3 reads, When a general consent is withdrawn, the CBI needs to seek case-wise consent for investigation from the concerned state government. Please have a look at the options given. What is the context? This article from the Hindu takes note of the new government in Bihar considering withdrawing the general consent offered to the Central Bureau of Investigation or the CBI. Note, nine states including West Bengal, Chhattisgarh, Rajasthan, Punjab and Meghalaya have so far withdrawn general consent for the CBI to probe cases in their jurisdiction. With this understanding, let's get back to the question. Consider the first statement. This statement is correct. Note, the CBI is governed by the Delhi Special Police Establishment Act of 1946. And according to Section 6 of the DSPE Act, the CBI must mandatorily obtain the consent of the state government concerned before beginning to investigate a crime in the state. Here, it would be relevant to understand the concerned provisions of the constitution. Note, the legal foundation of the CBI has been construed to be based on entry 80 of the union list, which provides for the extension of powers of the police force belonging to one state to any area in another state, but not without its permission. Also note, the subject police is found as entry 2 in the state list under the 7th schedule of the Indian constitution. Hence, one can say that the CBI's position in this respect is different from that of the National Investigation Agency or the NIA that has jurisdiction across the country. Consider the second statement. This statement is correct. That is, the consent of the state government to CBI can be either case specific or general. Now, let us understand how these two are different. In the case of a general consent, the CBI is not required to seek fresh permission every time it enters that state in connection with investigation or for every case. On the contrary, in case of specific consent, CBI needs to seek case-wise consent for investigation from the concerned state government. While general consent facilitates seamless investigation, the specific consent can impose hurdles in the path of investigation by the CBI. From our discussion, it is also evident that the third statement is also correct. Since the question asks for the correct statements, the answer to this question would be option D, 1, 2 and 3. Moving on to the fourth question, it reads, which of the following statements is or are correct with respect to Stephen's Quintet? There are three question statements given here. The first one reads, it is the first compact galaxy group ever discovered. The second statement reads, it is visible in the Pegasus constellation. And the third statement reads, it was discovered recently by the James Webb Space Telescope. Please have a look at the options given. What is the context? This article from the Indian Express titled Light on Dark Matter analyzes the breakthrough provided by the James Webb Space Telescope in the domain of astronomy. It takes note of the major observations made by the Space Space Telescope in the recently released images. The recently released images includes those of the Carina Nebula, the Cartwheel Galaxy as well as the Stephens Quintet. Note, Stephens Quintet is a visual grouping of five galaxies of which four form the first compact galaxy group ever discovered. Please note, this group was first discovered in the year 1877 at the Marseille Observatory. This group is visible in the constellation Pegasus. With this understanding, let's get back to the question. From our discussion, it becomes clear that the first two statements are correct, while the third statement is wrong. Please note, the Stephens Quintet 
was discovered way back in the year 1877 and it was just one of the five cosmic objects observed by the James Webb Space Telescope as part of the release of its first official science images. Since the question asked for the correct statements, the answer to this question would be option A, 1 and 2 only. Moving on to the last question. This is a question from the UPSC 2019 prelims paper. The question reads, in the context of wearable technology, which of the following tasks is or are accomplished by wearable devices? The first one, location identification of a person. The second one, sleep monitoring of a person. The third one, assisting the hearing impaired person. Select the correct answer using the code given below. Please have a look at the options given. First of all, what do we mean by wearable technology? This includes smart electronic devices, devices with microcontrollers that can be incorporated into clothing or worn on the body as implants or accessories. It includes devices such as smart watches or other electronic devices. Wearable technology has a variety of applications which have been growing over time. It appears prominently in consumer electronics with the popularization of the smartwatch and activity tracker. Apart from commercial use, wearable technology is being incorporated into navigation systems, advanced textiles as well as healthcare. In professional sports, wearable technology has applications in monitoring and real-time feedback for athletes. Consider the applications given here. Wearable technology can indeed help identify the location of a person. It can help monitor the health as well as sleep of a person and it can also be used to assist the hearing impaired person. Hence, the answer to this question would be option D, 1, 2 and 3. Next, moving on to the fact of the day, full court meeting. What is the context? After taking oath as the Chief Justice of India, Justice UU Lalit recently called for a meeting of the full court. In this context, let us understand a few basic aspects related to full court meeting. Now, what do you mean by a full court meeting? It basically means a meeting that is attended by all judges of the court. Who can call it? These meetings are conveyed at the discretion of the Chief Justice of India and no one else can call such full court meetings. When are these meetings held? Please note, there are no written rules about when these meetings are held and they do not follow any particular calendar. These meetings are held or called for depending on the need for them. What happens in such meetings? Such meetings are called to discuss important issues regarding the judiciary. Next, let us understand what is the significance of such full court meetings. Please note, the involvement of all the judges would help ensure the involvement of the main stakeholders in addressing the major problems being faced by the higher judiciary. Also note, these full court meetings have been held many times in the past and this is not the first such full court meeting. This is all we have for today's discussion. Thank you for being with us.